Bonjour! Buonasera! Ah, how are you? Dear friends, I'm with the Michelangelo, the Leonardo Vinci, the America. This is mid-December, and dear friends, we wanted to give you the gift of the year. This is Mario Sciotto, one of the most incredible artists of all time. With his hands and his mind, he can actually create anything you desire. He's done over 17,200 models. As you can see here, some of those well-known you've ever encountered in the history of movies and phenomenal features all around the US and the world. We are today in his amazing studio in the heart of Napa Valley, and he's gonna give us a tour and the history of who he is, what he does, and dear friends, you've already known him because you've seen a lot of his monuments that he's built all around the U.S., but today he's welcoming us in his home. Are we ready? We are ready. Woo! Oh, Mario! So, Thank as you. we're going to go throughout your life, but tell us about those phenomenal things before we get into how you started and who you are and all those great attributes of yours. Well, thank you for that introduction, Jean-Charles. And it's absolutely wonderful having you here. Um, I have been very blessed from well, the day well, I was... Well, let's make sure we toast, because no blessing goes without the blood of Christ. Exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> Magnificent. Thank you. So, I lived a very blessed life and very fortunate that I grew up in a neighborhood when I was a kid in Oakland, California. Yeah. It was very blue collar, no one was rich or anything, but it was a neighborhood that read like the United Nations. You were Italian, African American, Hispanic, Jewish, I remember the French, all in one neighborhood. And, and we had such a camaraderie, such a familyhood, if you want. And one of the things was always having the neighbor's kids over for my mom's pizza and pasta and meatballs. And her singing skills. And singing. She was a magnificent opera singer at one time. And, you know, a few days ago, Mario sent me a video of his beautiful, irresistible mom singing for me. And it was not only emotional, moving, but what a talent. Yeah. And she's 91 with Alzheimer's. Opera singer she was, yes, right? Yes, San Francisco opera, early days. Early Amazing. Days. Yes. Wow. So, so I was very blessed to be born into that neighborhood. However, I had something that no one could identify back then. And I had what ultimately became severe colorblindness. So when you're in elementary school and the teacher holds up the sign, it says, yeah. how do you spell this color? And you have no idea what color it is. You guess and then suddenly they look at you and they think this kid needs to be in the need help class. There's yeah. something wrong with him. Even though I was always drawing and loving it. But so they put me in a need help class. Even though it was only color blindness. Because they couldn't believe I couldn't understand or know what the colors were. There were no Crazy. tests for it. So I have what's called yellow blue color blindness. So about 90% of color that you see, I cannot so see. So you cannot see I don't my stand. blue leopard. No. no you can obviously see the shape yeah. Yeah. of my muscles. I could. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I know he it. knows how to sculpt. <laughs> I may not remember your name but I will remember every line increase on your face. Oh, <laughs> that's when we know we need plastic surgery. <laughs> so, so that's amazing. So you went, in fact, to a special needs school there? Well, well, not a school. In, their own, in the school, I was in the lower ranking until one day the late, great Marcus Foster superintendent of schools came through the school. And he saw drawings on the board. And they said, who's this kid? And he said, I want to know because we're going to do a special Renaissance school wow. for kids who are not doing well, but show an aptitude for art. So for three years, seventh, eighth, and ninth grade, I went to the Renaissance school. That 
changed my life forever. And you're a Renaissance man, so it fits exactly <laughs> who you are. <laughs> you're kind. And how did that change your life? What they did is you learned by visual learning. Mm. And, and it tapped into what I was thinking and feeling that then allowed me to convey even better. Um, they wouldn't show you how to sculpt. They would go, here is a plop of clay. What are you going to do? When they did that, I was like, oh, I'm in heaven. And I just went to town. And it was like, and actually in the building, we'll show you later, the very first sculpture I ever did is in this building. Wow. So that made the hunger so strong for wanting to learn art. And to this day, here I am, 60 years old. I can't even believe it. Six, Although I, you look 50, just to let you know. Uh, or even that 45. <laughs> well, let's drink to you. Thank you. <laughs> so so I, 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 I never stopped wanting to learn. To this day, it is so important to continue to learn new Continuous design, learning. Take new information. Move your ego out of it. Because anyone who thinks in the art world that they have arrived or they think they have the answer, you will not learn anything. You go That's backwards. Right. So I'm always hungry to find, and you can see it through my art. And just, you're looking at some samples of the early art that I did that was very driven by the movie industry. And as a little kid, I loved Frankenstein and Dracula and whatnot and... and but, but the funny thing was, I was gravitated more towards fantasy than I didn't, to this day, I don't like really scary movies, but I love dragons. And, and, and I loved an Frankenstein movie. because there was a personality behind Frankenstein. For sure. So I would always mm -hmm. make sculptures of these guys and had no idea what I was doing with it, but I had also no idea how it was training me to create composition that is not out of the normal realm. How did you realize, Mario, that sculpting was going to be your path? Because we've known each other for many, many years, and we're great friends, and I'm an enormous admirer of Mario. Enormous. Thank you. And... Every time I come to his studio where we are right now, I have shivers, goosebumps. I'm excited. That's where I want to live. <laughs> and you're an amazing drawer as well, and I'm sure painter. And you know every form of art, which is amazing. How did you know it was finally we're sculpting? Maybe you would want to Well, go. it's interesting how you, how you perceive that because, yes, I have to draw. Yes, I've painted in the past. And sculpting and different materials. It's an accumulation of all of those things. If you want to be a good sculptor, yes. you have to learn how to draw. Drawing to this day is the nucleus uh -huh. of all creativity. Because if you can draw it, you can put it in any other medium. And it's such a simple thing, but for some reason or not, the art educational system, the modern day one, seems to almost be hiding that to some degree. And that's why we have an intern program here mm, that we've been relation. doing for over 20 years. And we're expanding that intern program in 2022 to a very, 2022, and we will have 22 interns in 2022. Um, and what we try to do with them is start them with the basics. All of my technicians and artists, I have, phenomenal artists who work for me. They all are classically trained, but their application into modern technology far away is, is so ahead of the people who have not had the basic fundamental art uh, training. And that's why this is so important. And at this stage in my life, I want to pass on what I know and then continue to know and just pass that on because if you're surrounded by art, people feel much better and it's informative. Sure. That's so, so energizing, so inspiring, and so thrilling. So, Mario, tell us how you started because we're going to go around the studio, dear friends, and you're going to see some of the things you could never imagine you've seen coming out of this head 
those hands and this soul. Tell us about the beginning of this enormous success to create for the movie industry, for Universal Studios, for Star Wars, and naturally as well for Vegas. Yes. What well, you've yeah. done. <laughs> I mean, dear friends, when you hear about this now, you're talking success, it's insane. Well, thank you. So I started, I was always gravitated towards the fantasy and the unusual and science fiction. I loved the old classic movies and I would try to emulate yeah. them. Even as, I'm talking like four years old, five years old, scribbling on paper bags and napkins with a crayon, taking mud and trying to turn it into a sculpture. So the, this irresistible craving was always there. And as I progressed, it always brought me things that had I not done this could have never had, including Marcus Foster who brought me into that school. And then I had a very tough decision to make when I left high school. And the decision was, I was accepted at University of California. Mm. Do I go there with pre-med to try to do something rational even though this hunger for art was just consuming pre-med pre-med wow because i thought i'm the... going to call you dr shoto now <laughs> <laughs> dr Shoto. voodoo doctor voodoo um and i had to make a decision and and it's like i i did start the human human anatomy and all and, well, and, which and physiology know. which really helped my art i always I, and that's what made yeah. me go why am i doing this for the medicine i am an artist so i I did the unthinkable by other people's standards, but even my parents, who are immigrants from Italy, even my parents go, Mario, if that's what's going to make you happy, if you do it, do it 150%. Don't do it just as a fun thing. Do it mm -hmm. because you truly love it. And all the other people thought, you got to be kidding. He was accepted at UC Berkeley. This, 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 that's not being practical. And let me tell you. <laughs> Those other people were right for a short period of time because I was starving. And I was, applying, I was working on different low-budget movies, contracted with companies who contracted with Lucasfilms. And, you know, you, bear, you got less than minimum wage. But I, nothing stopped me. I kept designing till 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. I never, and to this day, I barely sleep. And, you and sleep two hours a day. If, I I, if that. And... And I started creating my own characters and mm -hmm. creatures. So I'm about 21, 22 years old. Just a kid. At that time, you think you're an old man. And I, start, and I said, something's got to lead me. And the very first Halloween convention in the United States took place in Chicago in the winter. I had no idea what I was doing. I begged and borrowed money to get a little eight foot booth and I brought my handmade samples there. And I had never been in the snow up to that point. And I show up in a blazer about like that, one pair of pants, and I get to the show, set my thing and think, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to pay anybody back. I'm setting it up. I spin around while I was, and my pants split all the way up to. <laughs> So I not only was... Were you wearing a box of short? <laughs> uh, thong underwear only. <laughs> so I took my jacket and wrapped it around my, my waist so to hide the thing. And I thought, I'm just going to embarrass myself, but I better suck it up and go to the show. There, and I couldn't get to my aisle that morning. I said, oh, it's bad enough. Now I'm going to be late. The line in that aisle was waiting to place an order with me. And I freaked out. I can't believe it. I even lost my voice. And I'm sitting there trying to write orders. In that line were some major retailers. Wow. That was the beginning of expanding this different idea. And it was things like this that I introduced to the Halloween industry. That's amazing. The dr no one had been doing dragons, let alone like this. It ultimately led... If you can believe this, I went from the kid who had the pants split to... The colorblinded kid. Yeah, in eight years, eight years, 
I was approached by a bunch of financiers and said, we want to make you public and became a public company, wow. which I stayed with for about 12 years. And I'm glad I did it. And during that time, I went from, you know, scrounging work in the movie industry to every major movie company coming to me to produce merchandise that was on the cutting edge. As you can see, so, these are exact replicas of Darth Vader, of Yoda, Jabba the Hutt, and, and Boba Fett. And I did, I mean, so, I did so So many you created all those? For, for the consumer product industry based on going to Lucasfilms, working with the people there, sculpting as accurately as possible. That exploded and wow. really launched, and that happened actually just before becoming a public company. And then that's the snowball effect that Universal Studios, Warner Brothers, Tales from the Crypt, we revitalized Frankenstein and Wolfman and Dracula. They were dead licenses, really? no pun intended. <laughs> they were dead licenses at that time. And I was an absolute loving every minute of it, every minute of it, and expanding and getting bigger and bigger. And then the reality hit me. Hmm. Okay, so we're make, creating this for movies, for movie things. The hunger to go back to creating your own ideas was so strong. And again, when you do the work, they will come. Yeah. And who came? Great advice. The entertainment casino industry came huh. to me and said, we want to have that creativity in our industry. That's what led to a massive amount of designing, sculpting, architectural development that I did for Caesar's Palace, Harris Las Vegas, Harris New Orleans. I was brought in by one of the absolute icons of the casino world. His name was Henry Conversano, who was the original guy who thought of the themed casino. casino. Mm. So he took me on and we became that three-dimensional component that would come to life. So that, that, and, and what an evolution of a world. Oh, it, and, and from the trade show to the split trousers to yes. the orders to those amazing, magnificent, phenomenal, iconic personalities on television and movies to the casino industry. So, in the casino world, explain us because you created theatrical scenes, uh, yeah. you created the whole casino inside. Well, in Harris, New Orleans, we told the history of jazz, 120 years of jazz. Every area in the casinos with sculpture, bas reliefs, the fountains, the molding, everything is based on the history of jazz coming out of New Orleans. And that was a dream project. Not to mention, and you'd appreciate this, the food was phenomenal of course. In, in New Orleans. And of course, the, you know. So you became really creating theatrical scenes yes. all around. They had to tell a story. And so you do all the drawings, yes. which we yeah. could see here. And I think we got to look at this amazing unbelievable fertile mind that is Mario. He is really the Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> Thank who, you. You're so kind. Well, who understood anatomy, who yeah. understood human structure, but look at those scenes. I mean, so you do drawings. That's your process. Explain yeah. us. So I do a quick sketch and my sketching process is very fast. I don't draw for more than 15 minutes to 30 minutes. Huh. And then I pull away to work on something else. So that takes you 15, 20 minutes to about do? About that. Yeah, this from <laughs> this I pasted sheet from here to here was about 20 minutes. And then, because what you do is I've learned you visualize it, you get the clarity in your head and then you translate that to your hands. That's amazing. And then that allows you to, to it just comes out naturally. When it doesn't work, you know you're clogged up somewhere. And I'm yeah. not talking about constipation. <laughs> but you, you, 
but you then, then you drink JCB sixty nine. That's what <laughs> helps. Okay. <laughs> so the other thing about the drawing is there are no restrictions. Yes. And the problem with the art world and the architectural world mm -hmm. is they're always trying to put parameters on things. I believe start with the ideas as big as they can be. Yes. Then you fine tune them for whatever the location or the event is going to be. But don't start the other way around right. because you will lose that creative So drawing fire. as wide as we can, we create the pantheon. Yep. And from the Pantheon, then we narrow it down eventually if we have to. Exactly, because you go the other way and things have become so structured. We do a lot of work for uh, monuments in cities and there's so much restraint that they want. They don't want you to tell the whole story. And I could go on and on and I won't about some of the things that we have had to change. Well, shall we? Shall we take a look Let's at it? Let's do it. Let's go, dear friends. We're going to go at the entrance of the studio and walk you through this unbelievable social commitment that Mario has done for the history of race, diversity, unity, and the history of the United States. Exactly. Well, dear friends, we're traveling now to the phenomenal museum. I don't even want to call it showroom. Not even a studio, not even an atelier. This is the place where basically shivers, goosebumps happens because to generations, the meaning of it is never to forget the people who are behind and before us and who came before us, who sculpted this wine for over five generations at Raymond. So magnificent. With those fabulous hands that you've seen, Mario's long finger, we're going to have to zoom in <laughs> on those magical fingers. Are they insured very highly? Uh, Francine, my executive uh, here, can tell you they're highly insured <laughs> <laughs> because we want to make sure that they are safe and yeah. safeguarded for the future. All right. So, Mario, tell us about Remember Them because this is probably one of the most powerful things you've ever done. And it, it, it is one of the most important things I've ever done. And it happened unexpectedly. I was moving along in my life very successful the uh, public company, doing th the casino industry. But all of those years, and going back to when I was a little kid, I had this infatuation and hunger and desire to know history and how did we get here. And knowing the stories, going from the Roman Empire to the Renaissance to the Americas and the trials and tribulations. and. I felt like with all this accomplishment I was doing, what am I leaving for people? What am I really doing for people? Everything's been for me and my family, mm. but what am I doing for people? And I'll never forget the morning of 9-11. I'm a very early riser, 4.30, 5 o'clock every morning. And I remember putting on the TV and it was surreal when the first twin tower yeah. hit. I still get the goosebumps sure. and hair. It's crazy. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing, that our safety of our country was being compromised. But more than that, this event was turning people against innocent people when it was actually a very small group of people who did these atrocities. And it made me think about all the people I had learned about Abraham Lincoln, Mother Teresa, Oscar Schindler, Franklin Roosevelt, Thich Nhat Hanh, on and on. And, and I said, the world needs to understand people who made a difference for other people. And what is the common denominator here? That they gave themselves to other people's benefit. Yeah. This, and I thought, this isn't a judgment of how perfect these people. In fact, it was about how imperfect people could do very perfect things, and we needed s examples of that. There were no monuments out there that brought all people together. Everything was either the white monument, the black monument, the this monument, the that. 
but nothing about inclusion. Yeah. So this is before our times now where we talk about inclusion and diversity, but I felt we needed to do this. And that calling was so powerful. It was that... so powerful. And the reason I knew it was so important, when I first announced doing this, people thought I was crazy. Hmm. And it was it's gonna be an case. uphill road, <laughs> yeah. And I thought, hmm, then I'm on to something. I had put out 400 correspondents, over 400 around the country, even internationally, describing this concept with drawings and models. And most people would say, nice idea, but it's not going to happen. But I never gave up until one day, the great Dr. Maya Angelou showed up at my door. Right here in Napa? No, this was in Oakland. Okay. This was in Oakland. And, she, and some people from a third and fourth party told, them, told her about what I was doing. And I had made this model. This, this is the mini You had of, made it. I, nothing stopped me. I would work at night. Wow. And, and I, so I, before he got the commission, dear friends, before you got yes, the order, yes. as we call it in business terms, yep, before. you did it, you sculpted it, you felt compelled to do it. So everyone in my company, especially the financial people, thought, you are crazy <laughs> to be doing this. We know that. And I made the very difficult choice, but I believe the most important choice. I broke away from my regular commercial art business and for the next 11 years focused on this wow. and social justice monuments, which I do to this day, which is now 21 years later. And so this is what became the Remember Them Monument. The actual one is 110 feet wide. It's laid out in 110 feet by 32 feet tall. And it depicts a total of 34 people on the front and back from all around the world, every religion, every race. And as I said, it is on the theme of giving yourselves to help other people in spite of our imperfections. And you have to ask the question, yeah. what if they hadn't done the good things they did? And I think that's an important question yeah. in this day and age because there's a lot of controversy about monuments and people of perfect backgrounds or not. We are all imperfect hmm. and we should celebrate that. That's right. So. Well, let's celebrate to imperfection, which eventually creates act of perfection. Yes, yes. as you That's just a great said way so of well. It. And this is in Oakland, California, dear friends. I know you all around the world, but can you imagine when we talk about 110 feet? This is 40 meters wide. This is significant. Yeah. This is two tennis courts almost. <laughs> yeah. And. So when you think about this, so do you want to walk us through quickly what it is? Because there's so much to see. It's so this is three of the four sections. It was done in four sections. And one of the things I do in my artwork is everything is started on a helix. So you, when you look at this, you, and the way it's laid out in the final, yes. this is much higher. It is a helix. Of, yeah. And the reason? Our helix is our shape of our DNA, and our DNA is 99.99% similar to each other. That is the reason for it. And again, to similarities. The other thing I did is I had them emerging from rock because they were like rock mm -hmm. in order to do what they did. You're seeing three of the sections. There's actually four sections. The first section is with Maya Angelou and Ruby Bridges. That piece is out on loan right now. But this is Franklin Roosevelt in a wheelchair, which, as we all know, most of his life, they tried to hide that. This is Mother Teresa. And I've been very fortunate to have a very good friend, Michael Colopy, the famous photographer, yeah. who was 17 years her photographer, and to hear the stories of true per persistence and fortitude in taking care of people. And again, all of these people, including her, when you look at social media and things, they make up stories and whatnot, 
she was an amazing, ama every one of them. Thich Nhat Hanh, who is a Buddhist monk who has over 110 books about bringing people together, was also one of Martin Luther King's partners. In the studio, you can see the, I don't know if you're able to catch that, but this over here is the full-size Thich Nhat Hanh. Full-size? <laughs> Look at this amazing, so it gives you an incredible achievement. They are. And as we move along here, Oscar Schindler, who over 2,000 Jewish families were saved because of this yeah. man that turned into over 2 million people. Frederick Douglass, Rosa Parks, yeah. Ralph Abernathy, who most people don't realize was a huge backbone to Martin Luther That's King right. and Coretta King. What you can't really see too much is uh, Helen Keller, who yeah. spoke five languages and couldn't hear and see. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, you want to think about that one. Gandhi is on the he other side. He loves to reflect on what we're hearing here. Thank you, Mario, and then to the, enlighten us this yeah. way. And then the final section, which is the 32-foot section in real life, it starts with Abraham Lincoln. And this is Rigoberto Menchu. Yep. I wanted people who, common people in the United States, wouldn't know that as a typical name, but need to know. Yeah. She won the Nobel Peace Prize for helping save a lot of people in the South Americas. That's right. Winston Churchill, which I've gotten all kinds of extreme comments I'm both sure. ways, but I beg the question, if he didn't sound the alarm of Nazism, what would have happened? That's right. And convince another gentleman right exactly. here. Exactly. To come down to the French beaches of Dunkerque, not to Santan, but to save Europe. <laughs> <laughs> um, Malcolm X. Yep. And most people don't know, a lot of people do not know the real true stories. I've gotten to know his daughter very well, Attila Shabazz. And how he realized that when he went to Mecca, that th this is a world for all people, not just one people, and changed his direction, which cost him his life. Yep. Cesar Chavez, yep. which we all know for the farm workers. Yep. Susan B. Anthony, one of the first human rights, civil rights woman protectors. Shirin Ibadi, I got to meet her in person, Nobel Peace Prize winner from Iran. The first judge of Iran under the old regime and then was prisoned for almost two years because she stopped the marriages of adult men to 10-year-old girls. Hmm. And she has been a human rights activist ever since. Her stories, to hear them, are just tear-jerking. Nelson Mandela, of course, at the top, and, t and the symbol of education, which he believed is the key, as we all of them believed, yeah. to a better world. Harvey Milk on this side, who was the first gay rights um, politician in yeah. the San Francisco, who unfortunately was assassinated. What you can't, I don't think you can see from that angle, is the student at Tiananmen Square who stood down the tanks. And this was an amazing, amazing human being that had he not done that, Tiananmen Square, if that were not filmed, probably would not have been known by the Western civilization that it was happening. And amazing. he lost his life for it. So what a research you've done here to be able to create this, how many personages total? Uh, 34 total, front and back, because there's local humanitarians also and that I did. You've done enormous research. Oh, behind. and my staff, and you know, it, it, this was, this was a, a project of nonstop labor for almost 11 years. And here was the funny thing about it: the art commission at the time was not crazy about this. They refused me, in fact. But to our benefit. Then Mayor Jerry Brown heard about it, and he said, don't worry, I love it, I believe in it, I'll find you a site. So he found a private site, 
and he said, you'll will it to the city. And that's how we got it down in the heart of downtown Oakland. That's unbelievable. Yeah. So people can see today. Yeah, and it's there, along it's, with a visually impaired wall, which we'll show you a little hey, later. Hey, dear friends, you know, heart moving and phenomenal that you dedicated over a decade of your life yeah. to this unbelievable monument that will live beyond all of us yeah. and will never be forgotten. <laughs> that speaks about a big question I have as we turn around mm -hmm. on the meaning of sculpture mm -hmm. and the meaning of art. You know, I come from the old world yeah. and there's not one street or one plaza or one place specifically France, Italy, and Spain, that doesn't have the meaning of the past. Whatever the people have done, what is your belief, not to be too political, of keeping, removing, for whatever reason, of what people may have done 800 years ago, 600 years ago, 500 years ago, amazing piece of art? Well, here's my belief. We're not removing the Roman art of ancient Rome. We're not removing the French art of the, you know, the 1500s, 1600s. How else can you learn? I think yeah. things need to be put in their perspective. That's and right. there's simple ways of doing that with plaques saying, this was made because That's at right. that time, that, that, that was the belief. But to remove it, all you're going to do is repeat the past mistakes if you don't recognize those mistakes. So, we're on I the same I touched the page. hand on the master, <laughs> and we're on the same wavelength on this one. <laughs> so, we are standing, as you could see, in front of this, very powerful figures. Yeah. This is, was called, is called the Path of Thorns and Roses. This is the original small model I first created, and it's the slave memorial in Alexandria, Virginia. Yes. I got awarded the project, um, and they allowed me to view the original manuscripts. It was, it is placed at the location where the slaves in the South were told that this is going to be the very first free city in the South. And they migrated to the city only to find out they were put into barracks in the hopes that they would die of typhoid fever. They were left in there basically almost stripped naked to in their own feces and starving. Over 60% of the children died. So in the manuscripts, Tragic. I got to read how they survived. And it all started with struggle, um, opposition, compassion, and hope. Wow. And hope, the figure of hope, he's standing on thorns, but holding an unbloomed rose. And the symbol there is, the rose is freedom, but it that's has right. not quite bloomed yet. And that's why I created it this way. And again, you see the helix formation. Yeah, for sure. What amazing spiral movement. Yeah. What energy you feel in that piece. And that's obviously a casting, yeah, a casting of a big scale. Look yeah. at this. I mean, unbelievable, dear friends. So the, the final piece with him at the top there is about 33 feet tall. <laughs> and the process, so you mold. You sculpt. I sculpt it first, then we mold it, then we make waxes of the molds, and then bring them to our foundry and pour the, Brass. the bronze. Bronze. Bronze, which is mostly copper. Yeah. Yeah. So. Pretty exciting. Let's keep moving, dear friends. There's so much to show you. So now, dear friends, we're moving into beauty because Mario has so many skills. I mean, we would need five days to show you all the skills he has. And now we're moving into the world of romance, beauty, charm, amazing shapes, and his true understanding of anatomy and proportion. And maybe medical school was a little good of an exercise. For it you. was actually. And I encourage that for emerging artists with human anatomy yeah. and physiology. She's reaching for my hands. Look yeah, at that. look at there. Ooh See? la la. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Objet inanimé. <laughs> so. 
I never wanted to restrict myself. I believe artists need to tell all stories. And some artists don't want to tell all stories, and I respect that. Yeah. But I believe as an artist, the, and the hunger to continue to grow, and most importantly, to connect people, that beauty is a thing that is available to everybody. That's right. And it is something we should celebrate. We should not be embarrassed about the human body. I think all forms of the human body, there is a beauty to them. Well, I mean, look at this. It is who, it is who we are. And it tells our life stories. Yeah. So one of the projects I did in the last uh, five years was I, I, I had been doing some studies. And once again, you do a study and you have no idea where it's going. Yeah. And somehow it shows up that someone wants that. And in this case, the four seasons, yeah. and it's telling the life story through the four seasons. So uh, winter, spring, summer, and autumn. And I've always had these visuals of what we do physically, spiritually during each of those phases. Mm -hmm. This was done for um, the estate of Tusk Winery, Michael Utenzu. And he gave me free reign on this, which was very rare. He's a great also. friend, by the way. Okay, so you yeah, have you been? Course, I don't yeah. know if you've been. Yes, there. I have. So this is spring, which is obviously you take your own interpretation what yeah. that means, but it is celebrating life and the new life. This is winter, yeah. And um, I'm very proud to say I, the original model, John Charles has the original model That's idea right. of winter. On Wapo Hill, he gave yeah. me the one. Yeah. So the idea here is if you are in full glory like this in the winter, it expresses the cold. And also winter is a time of closure and somewhat darkness. Mm -hmm. And that's why I did that. And back here is the original model of summer or the height of summer. And you could see the two figures swirling around the sun and basking in the light. And that's what that part's for. So I love to create the human figure telling life stories, not just sitting there like, a, you know, you see a mannequin or a bust or something that, you know, is real stiff. I want movement. Yeah, you I, have rhythm, you have energy, you have vibration. That's the idea. I mean, look at this spiral movement that is, again, phenomenal. And you study the perfect proportions as well, the golden rules. Well, there are golden rules, but I also break the golden rules. Because, and I learned this from Michelangelo. When you, pre in sculpture, when you create the body nude like this and show it in its full glory. It is always better to have the head equivalent in eight head sizes to the human figure versus the normal six and a half Ooh. or seven because there's an elegance to that. Now that's when you're doing the beautiful per in making perfection. There's also the other side where you're telling the story of some people who have all kinds of different shapes. And that's, that's a beautiful right. thing also. But for the classic Michelangelo theory, that was something that was very so important. So eight heads to the body. Eight heads to the body as opposed to six and a half or seven. Yeah, so, that's right. And well, let's keep walking, dear friends, and see more treasures. <laughs> Another unbelievable story here. So this... What you see here is the original prototype I created for the visually impaired wall that mm. goes with the Remember Them monument. My father lost his sight. And I remember when he came mm. down to the studio, he was brought down and he put his hands on the model that we just saw huh. of the sculpture. And it was heartbreaking to see, to know he could not see what it actually, but he was feeling it and he was so deeply moved. And at that moment, I recognized we need to do something for the visually impaired because they don't see sculptures. They don't see paintings. Brilliant. This is a way to bring them 
to life with art. So I worked with the Blind Center of Oakland of what would be the best way. And they said the height, you know, they helped us with technical things like the height. And the wall is designed where they actually come from behind and feel the face. Wow. And then, and without so, even yet in Braille identifying yeah. who that is, without it, but it tells them what that person was. I've, the blind center brought down people to test it, and these blind people were saying, "Oh my God, I had no idea Abraham Lincoln had a large nose or a cowlick, or Martin Luther King had a forehead that seemed so cerebral." I mean, those were the thoughts they were leaving me yeah. with. And then, of course, they come around and they read the, the Braille so that they know who that person For is sure. and what not. So, believe it or not, as grand as the epic, the Remember Them monument is, this is probably the most important thing that I created for that. Wow, because congratulations. What a great thought. And now, what do we have behind us? This is a, was my... Um, artistic interpretation of the sacrifices that the military makes. This is something I did personally. It was supposed to go to a location that lost its budget, but like all the work, it'll it's find its stunning, home. stunning, stunning work. And wow. it has... moving and so powerful. So se seven people, seven continents is yeah. what makes our military to keep our freedom. That's why I have this like this. So, incredible. All right. Hey, what do you think of this wine, Bob? I way? love this. This is fantastic. Napa Valley Raymond Generation, exactly where Mario started. Well, and, and uh, let me add, though, having this wine, and I can't tell you how many times that one glass of wine that I'll have and going each night, and recharging creatively Ooh, is an important does factor. Does that really help? It is very... Is it only just one glass? Well, sometimes more. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Look at this young man we're just meeting here. So this is a wax uh, model I did of President Obama. This one I did for the World Golf Hall of Fame, but I also did this for the Wax Museum. Um, uh, in San Francisco, really? where is another version of it in his suit as uh, president. So this is done with what we call a forensic study. So every pore on here matches to his pores and his ears, all the shape, everything. Every hair is punched in one at a time and then we trim it wow. back so that it... So this was done quite a few years ago. You could see he wasn't as gray. And But tell us about how is wax made and how does it stay forever so long? Well, that's a good question. I mean, it's the same wax basically that you use for your candles and we melt it down, slosh it into the mold. So once we, once we sculpt it out of clay, we make a mold of it, turn it upside down, clean the clay out, fill it with wax, spin it around, dump it out so it creates a skin I about see. that thick. And then we cut the eyes out and put real glass eyeballs in there. This is Even gorgeous. as you can see, eyelashes. And so you, you have a hair experts who come? Well, we are, everybody here says we have all had a hand in that. Good. So maybe if I need a few more, I could come here to the... Yeah, it, it, <laughs> you'll need a few glasses of wine to cut the <laughs> The <bang>. Shoto Hair Salon. <laughs> Well, what about this piece? This is a project I'm very proud of. This is the small model of a much bigger sculpture we are doing for the College of Rhode Island. Um, this is, we're working with the famous Viola Davis, mm -hmm. um, and the theater is being named after her, and we are working with her. her Background it was phenomenal. She came from Rhode Island College. Her story is a story that everybody should hear. Literally, absolute poverty background who rose to the highest level in her industry and never forgot where she came from. And she always lives by the phrase and philosophy, dream big, 
dream fierce. And that, when she told me that, she goes, now you figure out what that means to you visually. And bang, this is what I can, wow. three graces, they all look like her, of the theater. Um, so this will be about 26 feet tall Ooh. when it's completed. And the background will also be proportionately as big against the main entry wall. So we're very excited. She and her husband are absolutely wonderful to work with. And it's amazing, dear friends, when we look at art and we see what goes behind it, from the thinking process to the making to the execution to then its transformation and application to the site. It's really mind-boggling, isn't it? Yeah. Let's always stay behind what we see. Yep, I like that. Wow. Woo! So look at the artist as we come a little closer here. Yeah. So everything starts in this department where I rough out these very quick sketches. I've been I'm very proud and honored that the Dalai Lama has commissioned me to create um, to Oof. create uh, his monument for his new school and library in Ithaca, New York. Wow. So I'm beginning the process. As you can see here, I first do these little quick sketches. And one of the things that they had told me they want is the holding of the heart. Yep. All people, the connection through here, yes. through ourself. For sure. So, in, and I'm thinking right now about the composition and of course the sacred circle. One, and then I want to include things like animals because he is a huge believer that all life is important to every life, Absolutely. all the way down to the amoeba. Yeah. So that is the challenge and the beauty of coming up with what and, we're doing. and how much research? I mean, Buddhism, you don't necessarily know all the parts of it. No, and, and there are different kinds of Buddhism. And I have actually have always loved Buddhism and, and have been a big fan and do a lot of reading. But they've also sent me even more books on him, which is very helpful. And, For sure. Um, and I get to meet him in the upcoming months, which I'm really looking really? forward to. Yeah. Ooh la la. Yeah. Well, we'll have to come back and you'll tell us more. You got it. So, well, dear friends, let's keep going. There's more to see. Ooh. Ooh. So this is my think room. So this is your think room. Yeah. This is where the does doesn't matter how crazy the idea, but bring it to some kind of reality. It doesn't have to follow a rule that, well, you, you know, were you commissioned to do this? As artists, we have to continue to grow and develop our creativity. That's what happens in this room here. And you can see what I'm working on, that these are all related to each other. These are archangels and spirits of positivity, of beauty, of art. For example, this is the spirit of joy that I'm working on. And these are, it's not finished, but I lay out the clay to, <laughs> to capture the feeling. Then I decide later that, okay, I may be more detailed in here, maybe not. But everything that you see here, is done with your two fingers and three fingers. No That's tools. No Which tools. are the fingers you work with? The thumb? The these three mostly. Yeah. Those three. Unbelievable. Yeah. So this is the spirit of connectivity. Mm. And this is about how we ultimately are all brought together, connected. You can have your own religion, your own political belief, it doesn't matter, but you cannot argue. We come from the same planet, the same universe. And when you think about that, I think it's a good message for people to see how closely we related we really are and how important it is to take care of each other. Very thoughtful. And then, we have a lot of things happening right yes. here. Yes, yeah. And these are things that actually, Jean Charles, you and I have discussed and sure. ignited inspiration. And we hope, dear friends, 
one of these days, we end up with something as magical as this is, stemming out of the grapes of Napa Valley. Yeah, I would, what are we dreaming? Uh, but it may happen. <laughs> so this one is the spirit of hope, that all things can happen. And an important factor in all of my artwork, besides the helix, is sacred geometry. Yes. And there are geometries that I use that you may not think about when you are looking at it. Yeah, but but to, you feel and you sense. Yeah. And there's some things that sound technical, but it's the combining of emotion with ge geometry. One of the things I work by is triangles. Everything has to fit in a triangle somewhere on this. Yep. I because triangles it. are easy to look at they lead your eye without forcing you to have your eye in an awkward position. So if you can calibrate those triangles for leading your eye, that's what we use. And I instruct my interns, always go to that. If it doesn't, if you can't get it into a destination with triangles, you need to start over. Hmm. So, and speaking of interns, this is a, project here that I am extremely proud of um, that is called RISE. And RISE is about the symbol of being the best you can be. Hmm. And the idea of generations, the symbol of generations. In our glass and in our exactly. hands. Exactly. And remember, it was always someone else yeah. that got, helped us get here. That's right. And we can't forget those things. A lot of people sacrifice for us to be who and what we are today. And that's what this is about. The final version is going to be a 30-foot monument near the waterfront of Vallejo. I'm doing this with the Fighting Back Foundation. And with the Fighting Back Foundation, we will have 22 interns per year working on this over several years, that they will get the hands-on experience of, of how to create a project and equally important, how to implement a project. It doesn't do any good if it goes into your closet. That's right. It's how you get it out there. How do you do this realistically? What can you do? What can't you do? And of course, I believe all things are possible. I love this mantra. What about this one? This is the Frederick Douglass Memorial that we are doing in uh, Boston. And the whole history of what he had to deal with. Um, and, and, and talk about a true superstar hero to humanity. Yeah. Growing up in a slavery environment. And yet he became the conscience of Abraham Lincoln. That is a true spirit connected as far as I'm concerned. And the more you read about these things, the more connected That's you get. Right. And I strongly encourage my, my interns to read history of how we got here. And yeah. some of it's uncomfortable, but it's important to know the truths that is only going to help you as an artist. So that's Frederick Douglass. Maybe we get closer, Dylan, forgive me, but maybe you, and I'm gonna get the red wine now. So now, dear friends, you got the unbelievable message that Mario is sending us. Now we're gonna see really how he does it. What is that beautiful? It is this mud, and it literally is mud. And this one too. Oh, that we breathe life into. And there's a lot of symbol. Yep. Ooh, so this is warmer clay. Yeah, this is warm clay for ease of application. It also gives a good texture. So, Jean-Charles, I am going to make you new, the new Michelangelo. Woo! I'm ready for that. I've so been let's dreaming go. of this moment, dear friends, for many years. And now we're going to go with the artist and we're going to sculpt. You got it. And we have a secret blend that is Ooh. called Secret Indulgence. So what we'll do with that clay, you'll have to see. And stay with us. All right. So we are with the master. So we're going to 
basically sculpt under the supervision of Mother Teresa. She oversees my studio for me. We love her energy. In well, there. for sure. And I can feel it. Yeah. Look at her. Unbelievable. All right. So, so now we have a lot of tools here as well, right? Yeah. I mean, this is what it takes to really well, build. Well, to build the armature that goes underneath the clay because it, you have to have something to hold the clay shape. So this was worked out yesterday. And then late last night, my inspiration hit and I began laying the clay in. So one of the things I wanted to show you yes. and for you to participate and have your magic fingers. On <laughs> well, magic, I don't know. <laughs> is I, I could certainly work on wings. <laughs> so at this stage, at this stage, no tools are used with the clay. Okay. It is the connection with your fingers. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'll let you hold that for a second. Of course. And it smells so good. Where is the clay from, actually? It's from a special region. That... Yeah, there's a region in the Midwest where that's all harvested, and they plop it out, and it's just dirt with oils. Yeah. So. What kind of oils? Uh, they're type of petroleum. Yeah. Yeah. So here we go. This would be the first. So this is what I do. I put my hand over here, and I always use my fingers for the impression of... And I'm glad you're using other hands to hold your clay. It, those are the hands of creativity. This is the model for the archangel of creativity. I can pass you a little clay too. Okay, there see, we go. I've, I've participated now. <laughs> so you see how quick the master is? So you the put it in here. Work. And with sculpture, shadow and light is everything. Okay. And you... You want to create things that create the shadows so that it shows the features. And you just do it like this, like this. So right now, it's very impressionistic at this stage. Yeah. You want a little bit of this? Yes, and one little second here. So you could see on these, you do that, and then you go up on here for the upper wing. And you start putting it in. I mean, how long did it take you to create this first armature? Well, the armature itself took a little while. It took a couple of hours. Um, and then about an hour and a half of clay work so far. Yeah. Like that. Just an hour and a half. This is fast this speed. Is, this is do you want to throw it, Francine? Because I'm going to catch it. That I can do. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the gold of the earth is here to create. So we all come from the dirt. That's and, right. And so there's a lot of symbology and energy with clay. So you can see the terroir. it starts to take shape and we start looking like the other side. It's impressionistic at this stage. It'll be further. Would you like to apply some? Well, for come sure. Come around this. We'll for change. sure. We for will. sure. For sure. I mean, you know, what a pleasure. I'm going to do a little bit of the wings here. See, we, he already caught on. I'm going to, well, not really, but isn't it fun? Dear friends, I've got to tell you, this is my dream. I've been wanting to be an intern for Mario for so long. Hopefully my resume today makes it all the way to the top. And maybe <laughs> I could spend a few days learning but there's a lot of art doing the armature, too. Yes, um, because it, your sculpture is only as good as your armature of what you can create on there. And I want to go the big part. I want to do the wings. Yeah. See, see how you're transmitting your yeah. energy into it? I could it? feel it. I'm shivering of excitement. This is so much fun. There's another part I would want to work is on the body a little yeah, bit. That's you know? a, I that... like to sculpt bodies. I've touched quite a few throughout my life, so I feel <laughs> if I'm blinded or blindfolded, I could still do a few parts of it. Maybe the legs, maybe the cleavage, maybe the hands, you know. <laughs> so this is truly, this stage is the giving birth of the artwork. And while there's so much, many more hours to be involved, it's this part that is so critical because it truly identifies the life of the sculpture and art. So, let's so on, a, on a piece, you see, see, I'm copying the master, but 
You know, it's all about doing, right? Exactly. So on a piece like this one, how many would you say, on all your pieces, how do you succeed into creating, starting, delegating, and then finishing? Because I'm sure you have a process. Because you cannot create all this just by yourself. Right. Right. And I have the most wonderful, talented staff who works with me and is involved with every stage from concept to, to helping me with the armatures um, and even to some of the clay sometimes. And then mold making, casting, yeah. and then building, rebuilding the sculpture, putting, it's like a three dimensional puzzle once it's out of the mold and you have to combine all of those and put those together. Um, and then of course, there's the installation, which is a whole other That's logistic right. and structure that goes with that, that has to be right, or you don't want your sculpture falling down. Over no, that right. would be a pity. And to be resistant to weather conditions and be, you know, alert to everything which can happen from earthquakes to movements of uh, it, it, nature. So you got to right? really have your foundation and your structure proper. So there's a lot of engineering yes, attached to it. a lot of engineering, especially something like this. Now, I will sculpt all kinds of rock work that will hide the structural engineering inside mm -hmm. of it. So we make sure that everything is solid. And that's also an art unto itself. That's right. Is showing these like dynamic, in the final one, there will be no support structures on the outside. The wings, That's it. The wings will be floating by themselves. And resistant to any wind. And the uh, same thing has to be to figured out. Else. So, so you would have a, a model here sitting as well. I could see a mirror. I could see... So you bring live models as well. Yes. As it's been done since yes. the beginning of time. Yeah. You want the live model once you get past this stage where I have a concept so I can bring in the life of the model into the sculpture. Mm -hmm. So there'll be certain things that I'll preserve that is the human factor in yeah. all of this. Hey, don't you like your student? He's Let me been, take a look. He's been kind of working hard for you. Look, look at, at this. Oh my goodness. Oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> God, Sean Charles, you're in the wrong business. Well, I want to be, you know, I'm a dreaming artist. I wish... I would spend more time, you know, with this absolute phenomenal material that is clay. And I'm going to do something that will make you think of what is so important that you're doing actually for the Dalai Lama that he's going to be holding. And I want to do a heart. heart. Oh, look at this. In a shape of a feminine top body. <laughs> so there is forms into my heart. Because I don't think a heart should just purely be its figurative form. It should be an interpretation yep. of what is in your mind. Exactly. And for me, the feminine body is always part of it. So maybe the heart should be the shape of this. Look what how creative you, this guy what do you is. Think, yeah? You see, I'm, I'm uh, working I get, on I get it. In what a way, you... I, I think you understand where I'm going, right? Yeah. You see, this is so fun to do, dear friends. <laughs> hey, if you can think it, you can create it. That's right. And how much of that do you just do freestyle without even drawing? Quite a bit. Quite a bit. It all depends on what inspiration has hit me. But there's, I would say, at least 50 to 60% of the time, I go straight into clay models. Yeah. Without even a drawing. We, without a drawing. And... As we toast, what inspiration, besides all what you've seen now in the turn of 2021 to 2022, you know you have big project in Vallejo, 22 students, as you said, what mood of creativity are you in? We've seen the angels, joy, and all the energy around it. What is your next stage? Well, the next stage do you mean where the sculptures are going or, or Your the thinking level of my thinking? Going. My thinking right now is like a snowball storm effect of creating art to expand 
and really make it available for the masses. Because wow. if art, if people are surrounded by art, their attitudes are different. And you can do two things with the art. We can do many things with the art, but the two of my goal is one, to, for people to feel good about beauty, or rather people feel good when they see beauty, yeah. but also to tell stories and recognize people who did extraordinary things as well. Because that's how we learn, that's how we become inspired. And that's why I accept all kinds of art, whether it's realistic or representational or abstract, Everybody feels differently, but that is also why I think we should have all kinds of art. There should be no one place that says only this kind of art. That's wrong. It should be what people feel, and I know people feel good. And we all artists within ourselves. Yep. We all have within our vibration some creative forms. How would you recommend to everyone with us today, at the time of the holidays, when things slow down a little bit, you refer to the season and winter, to become an artist or to let their artistic self express itself. I believe that people, and we try to do this in here, is to do something beautiful to someone that they're not expecting. If you can do that, you're going to pass that message on, they're going to pass that message on. That is critical, I believe, and there's not enough of it. There needs to be more of that. So do you advise everyone to take a pencil, a page, start drawing, imagining, creating their own world? Well, from my perspective, yes, but not everyone will do a drawing, but you can do something creative. You could create some kind of food. As long as you're creating, create food, create wine. Well, <laughs> at least we could drink to that. So create something that comes from your hands, whatever that may be, and pass it on. And something that you personally love, I think is important. Then it's genuine. Well, this is a great advice. And this is what we've done, Mario, for you. Can you imagine we created a bracelet for this wine named Secret Indulgence. Oh, look at that on a her. very nice belt. Oh. So, dear friends, I'm just going to create a little bit of a, a little clay bit. Yeah, as a glue on that side, if you give me some perfect. You see, I'm learning fast that clay could be used to apply. And look, look at, at her. Beautiful. She has a heart. And a big heart, she's holding the heart of the world, as you referred to earlier. And now she has a sexy belt with the Secret Indulgence Resurrection Skull. Isn't it cool? It's magnificent. So Mario, we spent the last 90 minutes together dreaming, imagining a world. What would be, as one of the leading artists of the United States and the world, a leading thinker, because you communicate through your art so much. I mean, there's so much power. There's so much vision. It's not just being beautiful. It's not just about beauty. There's a lot of underlining messages every time we look at Mother Teresa's profile or this amazing creation. What's your message to the world as we well, turning in 15 days to 2022? My message to the world is reach across the aisle to who you feel is questionable to meet halfway. That is my message for things to get better. And I'm not reaching because you're questionable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reaching because I'm so grateful to have Mario as a friend. Thank you. I'm so, so thankful of your energy because I'm in levitation now. I feel we're living tonight, December 15th, and I'm going to be able to create anything I can, anything I want, and build anything we wish to do. I love so it. So my wish for 2022 is we got to have some of Mario Shioto's art in some of our wineries. I drink to that. <laughs>